What's up you guys, welcome to the channel. The purpose of today's video is to provide a resource for those that are getting into the watch hobby. There's new people coming into this hobby every day and it can be a bit confusing with all of the terminology and watch parts and just everything that involves watches. So the hope is to kind of clear up a little bit of confusion and that way when you're watching review videos or unboxings and they're talking about the different characteristics and features of watch you'll have a better idea of what it is that they're talking about also i want to give a huge thank you to everyone that's subscribed to the channel thank you so much you guys have no idea what it means to me every time i see a new subscriber a like on a video or a comment it just makes me so happy so thank you for that also i just wanted to mention that i'm putting together a watch giveaway for when i reach 100 subscribers so just stay tuned for more information on that in a later video. Also, if you're new here, this channel is dedicated to watch reviews, watch comparisons, educational videos similar to this one right here, and just an overall appreciation of watches. If that sounds like something that you're into, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and maybe leaving a comment below. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay guys, before we get into the different watch parts, I wanted to cover a couple of things with you. First, uh, there are two types of watches that you're going to hear most often. One's going to be quartz, like this one right here, and all that means is that the watch is battery powered. The second type of watch is a mechanical watch, and that means the watch is motion powered, and this one right here is both capable of automatic and hand wind. Those are the two types of mechanical watches. If you're gonna power it through its automatic feature, you're going to be using this winding mass, also known as a rotor, this gold blade back here, and just the motion of shaking it or wearing it will have it spin around in the watch and build up energy um, to power the watch. If you're gonna utilize the hand wind feature, all you need to do to power the watch is to get it to its hand wind um, crown position and then turn the crown clockwise to wind the watch. Okay, there's two um, very common types of displays when it comes to watches. First is going to be a digital display, like this one right here. And the second is going to be an analog display, like this one right here. Moving on to the watch parts. So this main piece of material in this watch, it's going to be uh, stainless steel, is called the case. The watch case um, extends out on the end here and has these arms or legs, whatever you want to call them. These are called lugs, and the lugs uh, attach to the watch strap in order to make the watch wearable. This portion of the watch that is going up into a point around the crown, this is the crown, Around the crown is called the crown guards. Um, crown guards are just essentially what it sounds like. They're guarding the crown, protecting it, making sure that it stays um, well intact. Uh, it helps to keep the uh, water resistance of the watch. Other than that, um, some watches are going to have complications. This one is a chronograph and it has pushers. Um, these two pushers, one at the top, one at the bottom. Um, we're not going to go over the chronograph uh, features in this video. I just want to tell you what each part of the watch is. And so when you have a chronograph and you're talking about the different um, arms that stick out of the side and that aren't the crown, those are called pushers. Next would be the bezel. Um, the bezel is going to be that portion of the watch that sits on top of the case. Um, on dive watches like this one, the bezel, uh, bezel actually rotates and it has a colored or sometimes it'll be uh, stainless steel as well, but it'll have a um, portion in there that's considered a bezel insert and those can be swapped out. On any other type of watch, they still have a bezel that connects into the case 
and holds the crystal and just seals up the watch making sure that everything in there is protected but yeah it's just a piece of stainless steel on most watches and it's also the bezel for that one as well um, next is going to be the crystal the crystal is this transparent portion of the watch on the top here um, most uh, crystals are going to be either sapphire mineral crystal or acrylic the first two are the most common and they range in degrees of um, strength sapphire is obviously going to be the best probably not obvious but i'm telling you it's going to be the best so anytime you're able to get a sapphire crystal definitely go with that one um, for crystals there's two types of domed crystal this one's a curved dome crystal as you can see it's round there on the top and um, has the rounded sides as well. That's a curved or um, round dome crystal. This one right here is considered a boxed uh, domed crystal and it has more angular sides and a flat top. That one's gonna be called a boxed dome crystal. After that is the dial. Um, the dial is just gonna be that black portion under the crystal that every all of the printing is on it's either applied or printed but whatever is um, visible in terms of markings or numbers they're on the dial so with this one it's black and um, this outer ring of numbers and hash marks is considered the chapter ring and so on watches like this um, it's going to be on the dial itself on other watches, it will be a little bit offset from the dial, raised up a little bit. As you can see on this one, where the 55, the 60, the 05 are just above the dial and under the bezel, um, that's gonna be considered the chapter ring as well. So depending on what type of watch uh, style it is, uh, the chapter ring is going to look different on uh, different watches and so just know that the outermost ring of numbers or markings is going to be considered the chapter ring. Okay, so um, working around the dial, um, those markings at the uh, where the hours would be uh, are considered indices or hour markers and so there's always going to be 12 because it's 12 hours and half a day and it goes around twice to complete the day. So um, those large markers on the dial are called, are called indices. Um, some watches, not this one, um, have loom on them. Loom is basically just a material that um, takes in light and reacts in a way that it glows in the dark. And so watches like this, where it has those white um, portions on the indices. Those typically will have aluminum, but always check the specs on your packaging or whatever site you're purchasing from to make sure it's not just painted white and there's actually loom in the watch if that's something that you care for. Okay, like I talked about earlier, um, there are complications in watches. This one has a chronograph complication and that's basically just um, a way for you to use the watch to time other than just tracking um, the time yourself and seeing how much time has passed. Another complication would be considered, um, would be the day date complication here. Day obviously for day of the week and date for um, the date of the month. And so um, complications in essence are just features of a watch beyond telling the time. Okay, so some watches have sub dials or sub registers. Um, those are kind of used interchangeably in the videos and forums that I've seen. Um, basically, that's going to be these little dials um, that are um, sunk in or uh, just separate from the overall um, dial itself, and they're going to have. Um, indicators on them as well uh, if it's just a stylistic circle on the dial and it's not um, operating as a function it's not a sub register or a sub dial 
So as you can see, this one over here is counting the seconds because this long hand that would typically be the seconds hand is the chronograph hand. So it's not keeping track of the seconds for this watch. This um, sub register over here is taking care of that. Okay, so uh, moving on, uh, the last thing on the dial that um, I'm gonna talk to you guys about today are the hands and the hands are basically just the things that are moving around the dial in order to help you um, tell the time they're going to be in positions pointing to different indices and markings on the dial for you to tell the time so you have your seconds hand that's constantly moving around the dial you see this little guy moving right here and then your short hand is going to be your hour hand your long hand is going to be your minute hand um, in terms of what types of options you have for connecting into the case to wear the watch, this uh, metal option is gonna be called a bracelet. So the metal ones are always referred to as a bracelet. Your other options are going to be um, a strap or band. And straps and bands come in a bunch of different materials. That first one was leather. This one right here is rubber or silicone. And then there's also options like canvas or sailcloth that are those materials right there. Bracelets are going to have um, a couple different features that, um, that you can refer to about the watch. So these little pieces right here, these um, portion sections of the watch bracelet are called links. And so this first uh, piece up here that connects into the lugs via a spring bar inside, I'll put up a picture on screen of what a spring bar is, but it's basically just a pin that holds the end link into the lugs and keeps it secure so your watch um, bracelet doesn't fall off your watch. It's also in the watch straps. Um, this is an end link. The ones on the outside are called uh, outer links and these ones in the middle are called mid links. Um, for watch bracelets and sometimes it's on straps but um, anytime there's this like fold over um, clasp um, it's called a clasp so anytime your uh, watch has this fold over design um, that's going to be called a clasp anytime your watch has this type of secure point for the watch it's going to be called a buckle and more specifically a tang buckle and all that a tang buckle is is your standard traditional buckle that look like all of these right here there's a ton of different type of clasps for watches i don't have any other than this fold over clasp so that's all i'm going to talk to you guys about today but any um, buckle that folds over in a similar fashion to this is going to be called a clasp on the watch straps, in order for your watch to fit um, and look a little bit more put together, your watch has um, these two pieces right here that are called keepers. The keepers do exactly what it sounds like they do. They keep the tail of your watch tucked in so that your watch doesn't look all loose and sloppy like this guy right here. So your keepers, just hold that tucked in and you look nice and put together. Um, that's pretty much it for what I wanted to cover in regards to watch parts. Um, there's a bunch of other parts, especially in the movement of the watch, but that can be discussed at a later time. That's not anything that we really need to go into deep detail with. This video would be entirely too long, um, but there's a couple other extra features and items that I think you guys should be aware of what they're called. Um, first is this guy right here. It's called a spring bar tool. Spring bar tool is essentially just a little pitchfork uh, or toothed um, tool to help remove uh, watch straps. Some watch straps have what's called a uh, quick release function. And basically you would just pull on this little bar right here 
So you just pull it and the watch strap just comes off very easily. Um, but if your watch doesn't have that, then you need this spring bar tool in order to get in between there and pop the pin out. After that is um, a microfiber cloth. Pretty much all of you should know what this is. If you have glasses or a camera or any type of like um, delicate glass, uh, microfibers are gonna come in really in handy. Make sure you, you don't scratch up your watch face and keeps uh, everything looking clean. And then finally, this is a digital caliper. Like we discussed earlier, digital because it has a direct readout. And then the caliper tool is just a measuring tool so that you can measure measure like your watch um, straps or you can measure your case size or whatever it is that you wanna measure. That way you can, I don't know, have that information. It's just good to know um, what that tool is and what it's used for. So that pretty much covers everything that I had for you guys today. Um, I hope it was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.